The Lulberts, that's our word, brought to you by Andrew Yang 2020, Campaign for President, bringing bags to everyone. The show is covered by a Creative Commons Zero license, no right reserve, but all mice reserve. And we're here with Steve Miller Miller, and I'm Jim Jesus. How are you, Steve? Very well. About to get that thousand dollars. Okay, get that thousand dollars. You gotta get them you gotta protect your bags. Protect your bags. <laughs> Uh, so, I mean, I mean, since it's the burning question on everybody's mind, considering that you are a sumo sexual, uh, yep. we better not bury the lead on what that exactly is. I'll that's somebody who, it. that's somebody who wants two, two Asian dudes worth of weight in one Asian dude. Okay. <laughs> possibly three, possibly, you know, in, in certain cases, four. Oh, oh. Depending. Depending. You, you know. Okay. At a certain point, logistics becomes a problem. But <laughs> you want you want you want a mobile. Yeah, and, and I think want. a lot of people have been asking you what you think of Andrew Yang, and I don't think they mean his policies because it's pretty clear what I, I'm pretty sure I, I understand what your position of his policies are. No bueno. Uh, so, he, okay, Andrew Yang looks like every dude from Grinder who ever sent me pics of him that were a decade old. And you'd show up, he'd look like Andrew Yang, and that was that. <laughs> the other problem with Andrew Yang is that he is way too fit for a sumo sexual the likes of myself. Uh, he looks like a dude I would be into after socialism. <laughs> after maybe like, a, you know, two terms of Andrew Yang. That's what... The kind of guys you would hit up in a bread line. Was, was what that, would be, that, that would be the biggest dude yeah. you could find would be Andrew Yang. We'd have to settle for that at this point. So yeah, uh, what do you know about Andrew Yang? A thousand dollars a month and apparently synth wave. <laughs> oh, I saw. Am I unwittingly part of a focus group? Are you? Are you part of the Yang campaign? <laughs> no, I, I've been part joking. of the sumo sexual outreach. Try to. Yeah, I don't know if you noticed my little avatar on Discord. It's also on Twitter. Got my, which was my cat. You know, with a '90s background, uh, I, I since put a little Yang hat on him, and uh, it, it's been confusing a lot of people. I had a lot of people going like, do, "Do you really? Are you really on the Yang gang? Like, are you so legit?" It's like, of course not. No, I'm only in it for the memes. <laughs> yeah, it was like, "Are you real? Are you really into 9/11?" Like, no, I, you know, I enjoyed the occasional jet fuel beam. Yeah. Beam, beam, you know. <laughs> yeah. But problem though, so. He is above a lot of the other candidates in the – so a lot of my understanding of U.S. politics now comes from betting odds and watching the numbers move, et cetera. And Yang is down to 30 to 1 to win the 2020 election. That's, that's, that's insane. Is that bad? Uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with how odds work, that means if you were to bet a dollar on Andrew Yang today, they'd give you 30 bucks back when he gets inaugurated, yeah, when he wins the election. Odds. So – that's 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 pretty nuts. Yeah, usually a winning odd is something like negative. That should be about a hundred to one, yeah. in my opinion. But we'll see. Yeah. He was above candidates like Amy Klobuchar and uh, Tulsi. Get like a lot of a lot of people with resumes and that are elected and that have raised money and shit. So that that who's that Ken doll that just got in the race? He, oh, uh, ben yeah, ben was ahead of him. See, this is the power of memes. You get a you get a little bit of four chan on your side. <laughs> And everybody knows your name, but we, but when we're remembering the candidates that could possibly win, we're like, what was his name again? Who was that guy that ran against Cruz? What was his name? Oh, shit. <laughs> Bento? Is that his name? Benito? No, no, that that's a size of, of drink at Starbucks. <laughs> that guy's rotten. By the way, on a side note, can we just go back to calling everything small, medium, and large? Why do I gotta fucking go into a Cold Stone Creamy and be like, I gotta have it? <laughs> like, I don't want to say that. Oh uh, wait, are you serious? They make you. I've I've been to a Cold Stone Creamery once in my life, but yeah. th that's a that's a thing there. Yeah, that's that's. There's like, I love it. I need it. I gotta have it, or something like that. Like, I don't know. I haven't been there in like ten years, but I remember seeing Ooh, that. That's and like, rough. That's stupid. That is real rough. Yeah. Oof. So can we can we just go back to having like regular names for things? Okay, just yeah. want a, I just want a small drink, okay? 
that's kind of a boomerish complaint on your part, but that's fine. I don't, I don't, it's super embarrassing. Oh, no, you know what it is? It's very like 80s stand up comic sort of complaint. <laughs> what is the deal with all these names for sizes? No, it, it's not that. It's By God, that when I, I was like growing up, idiot. we like, had three uh, and it was small, it was medium, and it was large. <laughs> and then sometimes you had extra large. Whoa, that's too much. For- no, like I, I just don't want to go into a place where I'm like, can I get a small thing? And they're like, you mean got to have it? It's like, fuck you. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I think we've just just unwittingly wrote a new Joe Matarese bit. Oh, shit. Yeah, th- this is this is the sort of thing folks want to hear on cruise ships. If you're a cruise ship comic, you're. <laughs> Your thing about na- names of, of sizes for drinks is, is really going to shred. <laughs> I don't go to Starbucks, so I, they can call whatever they want things. I don't care because I'm not ever going to go there. I'm performing on night six of the meme cruise. Yeah, Just I, kidding. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I remember I I used to cash my pay. Yo, Robert the- Murphy, book, book me for Contra Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> Please do. Uh, I, like, I, I, I used to cash my paychecks at a casino. And every, like, you, what you would do is you would hit this button every time that you cash your check, and it would spin like a little little wheel on the TV, and uh, it'll land on things like you can win anything from like a coffee to a car. And so one time I won a coffee, and they were like, I just like okay, I'll just get a regular coffee because I don't really care about the the frappuccino shit. I just I just want black coffee. And it came to like four dollars, and I gave them the ticket. And I was like four dollars for a fucking cup of coffee. Fuck you. That's like ten cents worth of beans. Suck, I'm over it. <laughs> and I don't think I've ever gone there. So. Well, it was free. You're complaining about something that was free. No, no, no. It was. I was fine that that it was free, but the fact they that were, I would have had to pay four dollars if I didn't have that coupon. You're upset like, about the hypothetical price of a cup of coffee. Yeah, yeah. Which means that like I'll drink this one and I'm fine with it. I'm happy, but don't ever expect me to come back. And why don't I get to pocket. spin the wheel when I get direct deposit? This is, <laughs> this is this is why I need to move to Nevada. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But the 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 problem is, and a lot of people don't ha- have an issue with this, is that they go and cash their check at the at the at the casino and then it's. You have to walk by all of those slot machines and all of those blackjack tables, and most people don't make it out alive, which I don't really care about gambling, so I'm just like, eh, whatever. Yeah, nah. What gets me is when I see the fucking hot wing thing right next to the door, and I'm like, oh, I need some atomic wings. You're into hot wings? Is that, that's that's something you're into? Yeah. I was never, I was never into it. There's places that make good hot wings, and uh, it's just, I don't know. Yeah. It's a social thing, though. Like, you go out, you have wings with the guys. That's something that apparently when you're... <laughs> I don't understand you straights and your chicken wings and your beer. <laughs> sure. sure. It's, it's a middle-class country club is just, wing night. Just just give me my vaporwave hats and my fucking... And my Andrew Yang, please. <laughs> yeah, dude. What, <laughs> like as soon as I get that $1,000 every month, I'm going to I'm gonna go down and there's going to be a place <laughs> that offers $5 per wing wings. And uh, spend it there because that's going to be the cheapest wing Shit. place in town. A thousand wings. Um. So yeah, Andrew Yang, like yeah, there, there's that. He's also wants to increase like the the VAT tax to like ten percent. And then what was the other thing? Uh, Whoa, he wants to tax fat people. <laughs> VAT. With a v- oh oh oh. A okay. VAT tax, value added tax. Um. So, yeah, so everything's going to get more expensive. Well, how many things could you possibly tax by the vat, though? There's, like, <laughs> it, it would have to be only liquid products, right? Well, Although, I, I guess that, that, that's that's a lot of components of what we buy, though. Like, yeah. there's not many products that you buy that don't have some sort of liquid in it somewhere in the manufacturing yeah. process. So even if you're taxing everything per vat, I don't know. That means that my art bag is going to go up six bucks a bottle. That's not a, that's not good. It's not a good look. Mm. But yeah, but a bunch I'm of ama- I'm amazed you've done like you went to his website and you read policy papers and shit. That's impressive. Most people that are in it for the memes, you know, keep it at <laughs> meme level. Well, I, ha- I had to, I had to know the enemy because at the end of the day, he's still the enemy. He's basically a Chinese communist. I don't care. <laughs> like it really doesn't matter who wins presidency to me. I mean, Donald. I got Trump a little. I got a, li- I got a little chubby. Yeah, I mean, Donald P- Trump probably was a little bit more successful than his contemporaries. Um, in terms of getting stuff that he wanted done, but even still, he's been a dismal failure 
in terms of like getting things done that he promised he was going to do. Like, where's the wall? Not that I want a wall. It's just where is it? You said you were going to do it. You didn't do it. Um, oh, oh, like a lot of presidents fail in what they're going to do. So I don't really care if he gets not like elected. I just don't care because just like every other president, he's just going to turn into fucking Mitt Romney again, just like all the presidents do. But I was just kind of interested, like, what is this all about? Because, you know, there is like a like a decent libertarian case for UBI, you know, because if you can get rid of things like SNAP, if you can get rid of things like Section 8 and in turn have something else, um, that's a good thing because you can incentivize people to kind of move up the economic rungs instead of trapping them into this thing where like, oh, I, I got a 50 cent raise. I have to quit my job because I'm about to lose my apartment, my fucking food stamps. You know, oh, geez. Yeah. So I'm just like, that's. These these systems are, are awful, awful in every way. So uh, getting rid of them is it was great to me, even if it means fucking inflation. I'm fine with that, but that's not what he wants. He wants to keep all of it <laughs> and have a UBI. You'd have so, to keep all of it. Yeah, and it's like no, no, don't. But uh, but a lot of alt writers are kind of supporting him because they either support the idea of having a UBI because they believe in technological unemployment, or you get people like Meraki you. <laughs> Who, who is uh, an accelerationist who just wants uh, to live in a socialist hellhole so that there will be a, a reactionary fascist movement to fucking physically remove all of them. Wink, wink. And I'm just like, no. There is also... I think he also said he wants to cut off Israel's foreign aid. Yeah. Um, that, that, that I'm sure that got a lot of people chubby. Yeah, I, I think the, there was uh, something we were saying. Right. Uh, I was looking at the math statistics for like... It's, I think it was like Asians getting into college and he's like it's not racist it's just math and then someone responded to him like right afterwards and it's like the top ranked re, uh, response to that thing which is like alright now do black crime statistics <laughs> it's like oh uh. so yeah the, the, the alt-right of former Donald Trump supporters are all kind of globbing onto Andrew Yang for reasons for six uh, weeks, for various re yeah, for six weeks, because he's not going to go anywhere. He's probably going to get keep at one percent. Um, but everybody's citing like, oh, he's got the mean power to win. It's like you know what, Vermin Supreme had fucking serious mean power. He didn't get one percent. So um, memes only go so far. Donald Trump didn't win because of memes. It helped, but if memes can carry a presidency, it would have been Bernie who won the nomination. Yang gets saying. in the debate now, though. He got enough. Uh, yeah. I, I think it's funny that the the Democrats are all all about the all, all about the campaign finance and blah 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 blah, but it's still like money raising is how you get in the debates. It's yeah. not, yeah. Well, he well, he's rich. He's an entrepreneur. So, mm -hmm. what did it, what business did he found Cold Stone Creamery? Did he name the sizes? <laughs> yeah, how'd you, how'd you know? This is why I don't like Andrew Yang. No, I'm just kidding. Yang Gang. Fucking. I want the. I'll take I a, want the. I'll, I love take a, it. I'll take a gotta have it coercive state. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he, uh, he basically runs like a bunch of charities that help poor people get jobs in places like Detroit and Cleveland. Mm, so he runs a, he's a he runs a charity. Yeah, I guess a bunch of different charities. I guess. So. What like a mutual fund of charities? Yeah. Because I think uh, if you're going to be a five hundred one c three, you can make pretty good coin running a five hundred one c three. The idea that nonprofits don't make money that just no, oh god no. Well, um, wait, hold on. Is he a donation scammer? He should run as a libertarian, <laughs> right? <laughs> fuck, fuck that cash money shit. Just, uh, just join the Libertarian Party and just go like, oh yeah, just put heroin vending machines in kids' schools. Um, you can kind of rip off a whole bunch of people, and they'll if know, anybody and they won't call the cops. I released the line yesterday on the 2020 Libertarian nomination, and the total is three and a half candidates with ties to charity scamming, <laughs> so or or any sort of donation scam. So. Over three and a half, under three and a half total. So Last time McAfee? I think it was. Didn't McAfee or no? McA yeah, definitely. Nope. No, 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 no. That okay. one, one hundred percent. Yep. Okay. And that him, uh, Kokesh, obviously, and then you could have Austin Peterson running, probably because he. It's not like he's going to get a big boy job. So. Yeah. Well, he ran. Might as well he, I thought he thought he's done with the LP and he's just he's all in the RP still or RNC. He. 
He has a fake radio show now. He says he has a show on the radio in like Je- so Jefferson Tony City, Styles. Missouri. <laughs> yeah, he's following the Tony Styles playbook, and he's 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 a fake radio host. <laughs> and GNC's like calling him every day, like, dude, when are you actually going to do a show? Because <laughs> here's the th- like, this is the th- like this is the thing that amazes me is I've seen so many people lie about being on the radio as if it's not an independently verifiable claim. Like y- you could call the radio station and be like, hey, do you air X show? And they will tell you either yes or no, yeah. and say what you want about like Michael from the Freedom Fiends. Like he never lied about like how many stations he was on or the nature of those stations. Yeah. Or- like whether they were in big cities, like whatever, whatever, whatever. Uh, these other folks are constantly lying about. Like uh, anyone could call a radio station. Hey, what time does X person show air? Who? Like, it, yeah. yeah, it never gets old. And by it the way, never we, ever ever gets old. We've learned that it's not too hard to get on radio. It's really not. No, it no. really isn't. No. Just and people, call it, GCN and be like, hey, I want to have a radio show. And, and it's like, a decline cool. in quality. Like, people only ever listen to the radio when they're, one, in their car, or two, old as all get out. Yeah. <laughs> but but it is kind of cool to, to go around and say, like, oh, so what do you do? Oh, yeah, I, I do a nationally syndicated talk radio show. That was kind of cool for a while. And then they're was, like, that, oh, then they start peering in, like, oh, what radio station you're on? Oh, oh I'm not. Well, what's the nearest one? Uh, Casper, Wyoming, Evans, Evansville, <laughs> Indiana. <laughs> Casper, Wyoming, or uh, King Minera. W H I V Kensington. Yeah, <laughs> I, th- I think I think there's some bleed over from Flagstaff from one of the stations <laughs> in Colorado, Southern Colorado. But yeah, like you know, it's still it's kind of interesting to say that. But I, but now I can say I'm a nationally syndicated. I was a former nationally syndicated talk radio, and then there's no follow ups to that. They're like, oh, except for maybe, oh, you were on the radio, cool. What was that yeah. like? Not like what radio station you on? What's the name of the show? <laughs> that was just that was just like, it's, nah, we're good. Yeah, it's kind of like it's kind of like the difference between like um, you know saying that you're in the military versus like walking around with the Purple Heart. It's like oh, I'm not even gonna ask about that. I'm just gonna be saying thank you for your service versus like oh, you're in the military. What branch? Oh, what infantry? Oh, neat. I was in the, that infantry. <laughs> Do you know Michael? <laughs> I was basically infantry. <laughs> yeah. Um. What was it? What, 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 Andrew Yang for Freedom Fiends. Rest in peace, Freedom Freedom Fiends. That was a fun yeah. ride. Yeah. Yep. Long may you run. Yeah. And and hopefully Yang will get elected and you'll get those neat bucks. And uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you get you could afford to go on some more. That's what I'm yeah. gonna do with my neat bucks. I'm gonna start a radio show that no one listens gonna to. Gonna buy a Libsyn. I wanna buy a Libsyn. Is that what it requires? Like I have to have a Libsyn account in order to do that? Uh, how much is a Libsyn account? Because Joe Batteries was complaining about how he kept his he keeps paying for his Libsyn despite having a old dormant podcast from which he has pod faded. I, I can't imagine it's that much money. <laughs> Uh, well, Nick Nick pays for his, and he has no problem paying for his, and he barely even uses it. So, I mean, it can't be that much. I can't imagine he's going like, oh, I'm shilling out like $100 a month for a podcast I do once every three months. I don't this is, think- this is, I, this is a good idea. Is it even monthly? I would think it would be yeah. annual, right? Probably. I think maybe like 40 bucks a year or something like that. Probably like the cost of a VPN. I can't imagine anything more. Okay, uh, that makes sense. But yeah. Oh, speaking of podcasting, ha- have have you heard of Podbean? Yes. Do you use Podbean? Uh, my show, main show is on Podbean, but I don't personally use it to listen to things, no. Oh, okay. Did you know that Podbean has this opportunity where you can like have like a Patreon account? And it's not run through Patreon? No, I was it's unaware that Podbean, as Pod you say Podbean. it. Podbean. I'm, I'm making it very clear that I'm talking about Podbean. I don't have any f- <laughs> sort of financial ties to this whatsoever. But isn't it interesting that we have our show on there? And Oh, oh wait, is, it, is that a Patreon button there? Oh, is that where we're going to be from now on? Oh, nice. I guess that's a good way to support our show. Theoretically, I mean, we could. Oh, going there. over to p o d b e a n dot, dot com. C. Yeah, <laughs> Lowbirds dot podbean dot com. Yes, podbean <laughs> over at the podbean. 
Why do I sound like I'm from the Midwest when I say that? The the, the pot of beans. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I tried going over to Subscribe Star, and that's just a mess. It's a hot mess. Um, but this is a whole lot better. But you have to use the app. Uh, you'll never get. get all the good alt right podcasts over on Subscribe Star because they'll argue about whether it's the Subscribe Star of David. <laughs> Can't ever happen. No, I guess. I guess you're right. But uh, like the the issue with that is like there's no like you can upload audio files to it, but I can't upload like an entire Lulberts episode to it because it's over 100 megabytes and we don't allow file size over 100 megabytes. And and if you want to listen to it, oh, we well, have to download the entire file to your phone and then you can listen to it on your. And it's like just can't you just get like an RSS feed or a, like a like a like an app that can play these things? Nope. So I'm over it. I'm over it. that. And like, you have to have like at least like five subscribers and you have to have made a hundred dollars to pull your money out because PayPal is being a bitch and won't you know, mess with them. So yeah, Podbean uses Stripe. So micro donations. Yeah. Podbean uses Stripe. So I'm just going to like, all right, I'm just going to use this. This is better anyway. So yeah, the show Cause fuck Patreon. I guess Brian Sovereign left Patreon too. So, oh, it it took this long to finally get a real, real quality hiccup. You there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Try that again. <laughs> Try what again? So, say whatever it is you said. You just, you, you hiccuped. I didn't say anything oh. of worth. Okay. So. Yeah. yeah he, yeah. he went over to Podbean and I was like, oh, what is this? Podbean.com. Slash Lulberts, I, th- I don't know what the address is. Just look for Lulberts on Podbean. But yeah, I guess he was on there, and he, he's got a little Patreon thing on there, and I, I subscribed to it, and I'm like, hell yeah. We finally, I can finally get access to it, because I like his Patreon stuff more than his actual show. His actual show's good. Um, Who's getting thrown off? What? Is he getting thrown off? He just left. Who? Brian. He no, got no, thrown no, no, off. No, 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 he left. Oh, he left on his own. It was voluntary. I, th- I thought for a second you were talking to your sumo. <laughs> no. <laughs> I thought I heard something. He left? <laughs> yeah, he left Patreon because... Uh, because Where did he, our BDSM slave go? Yeah, because yeah. he's like, look, like, I, I don't really like Sargon, and I don't like Lauren Southern and all these people, but yeah, that's, that's, it's still not a good look. <laughs> it's still, they're just banning people because of their political speech. Uh, they disagree with it, so... And that's why I definitely I don't, I'm not a big fan of any of those people either all the people that they banned except for bit shoot I'm, I'm you're, actually you, a fan of you have shoot. to leave because it was you who was sending all those death threats to Laura Loomer and Jacob Wall yesterday <laughs> Laura Loomer got death threats oh you didn't hear about this I have a feeling they're probably fake they are indeed fake and they are mm. getting potentially getting brought up on charges for fake death threats. Wah, wah, wah. So she's basically a Jesse Solomon Solomet Solomon Solomier Solomon. Yeah, Solomon. She, that was the Jesse. distinction that folks on the left were quick to equivocate as if <laughs> the believability was on equal par. Uh so you got two established lol cows saying, you know, <laughs> someone sent us death threats. <laughs> it's a great thing to have happen. Like, if, like, you know, if Jacob Wall says, like, people are threatening my life, like, that brings a little smile to your face. Yeah, like, no one really cares about Lauren Loomer, except for when she does something stupid and we all laugh at her and we just move on. My favorite, my favorite Lauren Loomer bloomer moment was, uh, was when she, uh, Said that someone slashed her tires. Yeah, I remember this. <laughs> Everyone was like, "No, they're just old." And they're like, "Look, they're cracking. Like, look at look at your tires. They're cracking. They're old. You should have replaced them a while ago." And she's like, "No, they were slashed." And then like Michelin tweeted back at her. The 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 actual company who made the tire. They were like, "No, those are just old tires." <laughs> uh, we Oof. really live it. We, we live in the Renaissance. <laughs> We live in the Renaissance era for people trying to get paid to have an opinion. Yep, uh, it's 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 really amazing. Hashtag and please the, donate. 
Sorry, yeah, what the was hash, saying? It's the hashtag please donate era, and everybody is trying to get themselves a piece of the pie yep. for and, and that's why I don't think I, I think it could very well could cash the over on the three and a half line on libertarian candidates that have ties to donation scams or or full on charity scams. Because yeah. you gotta remember, like a bunch of these folks went and established charities that were supposed to do something then they collected the money then there was no mention of ever completing the thing yeah. ever again and a lot of them teamed up on a lot of the different ones and they never cared and they never mentioned it again and uh, this is going to be treated like it's just a normal part of politics now because both the Democrat and Republican candidates the last time ran fake charities themselves uh, the Clinton Foundation was basically a bureaucracy where they could just give jobs to people they liked uh, give out some as aid and then the rest you just you have that little cushion where you wield your administrative power you wield influence you have these you know expensive gatherings where you bring world leaders in etc oh what is with this I don't get it and you're welcome back yeah <laughs> and uh, it, 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 and, and then and then Trump ran the, the the Trump Foundation, and that was not much better. And yep, yeah. But see, I I did it. I did a little Indiegogo thing, little kick kick fund me. But I delivered. God right. Damn, if I you deliver, it's not. It doesn't count. Yeah. It's, uh, I fucking delivered. I I made a fucking card game, and there was people like, hmm. I remember seeing this on Reddit when people were passing it around like, hmm, I don't know this Jim Jesus dude. He's just like a, like a YouTube channel with like, what, 600 subscribers or something. And they were like, hmm, yeah, I'm going to wait and see how well this goes before I buy one. And then I, I fucking came through and everybody got their cards, except for one girl. One girl didn't get her cards and she contacted mm -hmm. me and I was like, hold on, let me check my list. Oh, wow. Oh, I, oh, I, did, I did skip you. I'm sorry. And I sent her out a couple. She ordered one. There we go. I send her out two. So I was like, sorry. But you're also not an activist, and that's the thing. I feel that part <laughs> of the scabbiness is like tied to the fact that these folks are trying to make it as pro activists. Yeah. And that's the that's the class of folks that the libertarian presidential candidates are gonna be drawn from. Yeah. It's kinda like Molyneux when he was like saying, like, oh, I'm gonna make a documentary about philosophy, and then like five years later he's like, Oh, well, I made a documentary about how we need to have a Huat nation. Does that count? <laughs> <laughs> I went to a Poland and everything. Did he go to Poland? Yeah. Oh, you didn't oh, hear about this? To, yeah, he's, he's making a movie save, about, about why we about need to have sa a... Saving the white race by going to Poland? Yeah, yeah, because Poland is the whitest country or something. Um, yeah. Well, the last time Poland got invaded by Nazis, it went really well. Yeah. To be, to be fair, I mean, even though they fought them on Calvary, they almost won. <laughs> they almost won. <laughs> I don't I don't know what that really says. People people like make fun of Poland because like, oh Polish people are stupid. They try to attack uh, tanks with uh with the Calvary. But hey, they almost won. They almost won. You know what's crazy? How many people be how many people become Nazis just because they're bored? <sighs> er, 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 er. I don't know, a lot, maybe, maybe they're doing it. Maybe they're doing it for the memes. Maybe they're 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 yanging it. Yeah, it might be like a nine. People start for the memes, and then they wind up as ardent nine eleven truthers or flat earthers or whatever it is. That might explain Cantwell. I don't. It's possible Cantwell doesn't really believe the shit that he says. He's just like, oh, I just need to be edgy. What's the edgiest thing I can be? Oh, a Nazi. Well, I'll just say Nazi shit and get money. Scream! Scream at the top of my a fake accent and get banned from the state of Virginia for five years. As soon as I saw he was banned from the state of Virginia for five years, I thought this is the most clever tourism ad I've ever seen in my entire <laughs> life. A five-year lease in Virginia never looks so good. I'd move there tomorrow. Yep. <laughs> Guaranteed by law not to have Chris Gatwell within <laughs> however many miles it is from your house to the Virginia border. <sighs> Maybe I can get Nevada to, to ban Christopher Cantwell from, from the state for like five years. That'll, that'll you up know, the tourism. The, the, this is something that they should do more often is just exile. You know, <laughs> you, like if you want to if you want to handle mass incarceration, just be like, yo, you got to get the fuck out of here for I don't know. 
a decade piece. And then, like, by the time they come back in a decade, they'll probably be a different person. I'm not a decade ago. <laughs> I, I was dating a girl in Kansas City, and, uh, you know, I don't know if you know this about Kansas City, but it's, like, in Missouri, not in Kansas. Mm-hmm. And yep. it's right next to the Kansas border. And there's actually a Kansas City also in Kansas as well. In Kansas. Yeah. And uh, we used to drive around and stuff, and I would, I would, she would be like, uh, she, I'm on probation. I, I, I can't go into Kansas. I was like, why? She was like, oh, we, we were drunk, and it was a long story. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, we can drive on State Road, right? And so I would drive on State Road on the Kansas side of the street, and she'd be like, like just, you could see that she was like fucking nervous, like... Can we can we go north, please? <laughs> can we go north on the street or leave? And I was like, all right, I'm done fucking with you. Go north or get out. Yeah. She's like, it's a long story. It had to do with a a rally and and some 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 uh, uh some aerosol pepper spray and I, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> you listen to my radio show. <laughs> <laughs> I got bear maze Cantwell style. <laughs> That's one of his most embarrassing videos. I think uh, the the ones that, with that he recorded himself, thinking that they made him look good, where they yeah. actually made him. But this is like pre downfall. This is like maybe years, you know, at least a year before crying Nazi, when he was rolling up to people's houses at three in the morning over Facebook fights, threatening to bear mace them, <laughs> screaming into a megaphone, drunk off of his ass, driving down the street. Yeah, that was pretty good. Like that was quality content. That's the sort of cringe that you and I crave that this show really yes. enjoys discussing, like in good detail, etc. But uh you know, and then the one where he pulled his gun on the people while they while uh there was some couple having a fight on the street, yeah. like they were Philadelphia residents in New Hampshire. And he was Chris like, was like well, I'm yeah, gonna he go was... over there and record them yeah. and make sure everything's okay. <laughs> and uh, couples that are all irate because they're fighting for each other don't like some fat asshole walking up and just <laughs> recording their fight. <laughs> and be like, oh man, I'm gonna get so many clicks off of this one. Yep. And uh, they confronted him, and then he pulled his gun on them, and that was pretty much she. She was screaming and crying. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, he pulled his gun on some woman that was well, in a domestic it, dispute for, for, in public. Yeah, he, he shouldn't have been there. He shouldn't have been recording. And he was he was there. He, you, you can tell that he tries to find an opportunity to pull his gun out whenever possible. Like whenever there's an opportunity to oh, pull yeah. out the gun, he, he, he's there trying to And now to he can't do that doing. because he's a felon, right? Yeah. So that part was all fucked up. But if you know, if you are armed and someone is attacking you, there's really nothing you can do but to pull your gun. Because he that's... was sort of begging to lose his right to carry firearms, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like even from a libertarian <laughs> perspective, you probably don't want that dude carrying guns around all the time. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of like going into a a federal park in Washington D.C. and cocking a shotgun. Probably exactly. not a good idea. Probably get yeah. your house raided. They probably might find your mushrooms. So uh, you you might not want to do that. Want to hear an Adam Kokesh story that occurred since the last time we spoke on this podcast? It is more. <laughs> there, it's it's not much, but sure. He did block me on so, Twitter and called me a COINTEL pro. Right, exactly. And when, this was maybe a month ago, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and when that happened, I, there was some thread, and I wanted to read the entire thread. So I unblocked Kokesh so that I could read the thread. <laughs> and then I went, I read the thread. I forgot to unblock Kokesh, and then he tweets me angrily the next day at something I tweeted about him, I don't know, two, three years ago. But, like, after I'd blocked him initially, because as soon as his downfall started and there was the parking lot thing and this, that, and the third, <laughs> I blocked him first. Way what what downfall are you talking about? He's had like seven. Yeah, he's had like seven downfalls. Yeah. So, so somewhere between people signing his trailer and the slave contract, I blocked him. <laughs> and I was I, I was tweeting about it, and he f- tweet where I. Well, no. Well, hold on. What's happening? I don't. I don't, I don't get it. It's it's acting weird. Try now. Okay. Yeah. So uh, there's this there's this really old tweet where I don't tag him, and the only way he could have found this tweet is if he was searching his own name on Twitter. Well, of course. 
so he fell into the little trap that I normally lay f- specifically for stand-up comedians, which is to talk about somebody. Whoop. You mean subtweet them? Right. Uh, no, not subtweet them. You 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 say their name, but you don't tag them. And the only yeah, subtweeting. W- th- right. And then th- then they find it. And by searching their own name, and then you know that this person is a narcissist who searches their own name on Twitter. And sometimes they angrily DM you, like Hannibal Burris did, and that'll be that. But he's he's by no means the only one. He's just the most famous person to fall into the trap. I I, I search for my name, but I usually don't respond to it. I just kind of like just, just trying to gauge like what people are saying about me, and I just go, okay, that's their opinion. And how often do you do this, Jim? Once every two, three months, because yeah, I think that's that's generally healthy. If yeah. you want to get, especially if you're putting out content, you want to yeah. ga- gauge reaction. Yeah, like I want to make sure that someone's like, oh, I don't like this new style of video that Jim's doing with the with the '90s kind of Memphis theme. I'm not a big fan of that. Now, I want that feedback, but they're not going to comment that on my video. They're going to say it on Reddit. So I'll go and check Reddit. With, Are they saying anything? Nope, they're not. Cool. With Coke Edge, it was within 24 hours of when I <laughs> unplugged him. <laughs> he was up and searching his own name. I'm guessing this is something that he does multiple times a day. Mm-hmm. Wakes up, gets his Google alerts, searches his own name, checks for book orders, gets his slave to make him breakfast. <laughs> Well, checks Google ma- checks Google Maps for parking lots, sells some fake silver, you know. But to quote Walter Block, the problem with slavery is that it wasn't voluntary. So as long as they voluntarily signed that contract, it didn't break the nap, so therefore it's completely okay. We should totally allow it. Kids can consent. You know, right? there was a time in my life where I would laugh at that, but 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 now I'm a suburban Republican gay dad, so <laughs> You know, I live at, I I live at the behest of a of, of an Asian man. So, yep. All right. Uh, where was I going with that? There's, but oh yeah, just what no I, contract. By the way, you know what I do occasionally is like I'll uh, I'll go on my other account or I'll look in a, like a private browser or something like that, and I'll see people like tweeting at Kokesh or something that he retweets. Since he has me blocked, I can't follow the threads like that. So I have to like peek on my other account and then I'll grab the link to whoever's commenting on him and I'll be like, Oh yeah. You know, and like still be saying like, Oh yeah. Like I, I would never vote for this candidate cause he violates the NAP. I was like, Oh, I wonder if threatening to kill someone's, uh, to kill someone's family over in Japan because they disagree with their politics violates the nap. What do you think? <laughs> Apologize to the nap. And then, and then I would link like, uh, Larkin Rose's video about him, and they're like, "Oh, oh my God! I didn't realize he was terrible." And I was like, "Yeah, well, keep an eye out." Yep. yep. Pretty. Yeah. So the he, one thing we, I think this what finally got out. him to finally like react to me because it was like a good three or four months where I was like doing that, and then it got to the point where like a lot of people were like adding him to going like, "Oh, he he is terrible, isn't he?" I'm like, "Yep." Right. <laughs> and that's when he started going like, "All right, you're CoIntelPro." It's like, no. You're a piece of shit. <laughs> so predictable too. Yeah. Like it's yeah. always just the same bullshit. Yeah, it's always the same bullshit with people who are who are assholes and they get called out. Oh, you're Cointel Pro. Oh, you're Chaos Agent. Oh, it's you're an you're a NASA shill. It's it's the <laughs> it's a libertarian version of Russian bot. <laughs> yeah, it really is. You're a Russian bot. You are an agent of the state. Yep. But see, I, I wouldn't have to be an agent of the state if I could just get those Yang bucks. If I can just get those neat dollars, I wouldn't have to worry about it. You know, well, could, then all, we could all be agents of the state, really. It, well, yeah, but then I wouldn't have to do terrible things like make fun of furries and make fun of uh, um, <laughs> people jerking off in their cars and parking lots. And uh, Well, and it, it would just be nice to have people who are getting money from the government who, again, are not... Uh, libertarian presidential candidate to cash a VA check every month and <laughs> spit out some bullshit about, you know, bleeding the beast, starving the beast or whatever. 
Well, if there's no starving the beast. That's one of the dumbest things of all of, of all that you that you hear people say is, oh yeah, I take X check, Y check, X, Z benefit, but you know, I only do it because I think that me taking this hundred and thirty dollars every month is really going to be the 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 straw upon the camel's back that brings down statism forever. Yeah, and and, and 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 as like you know, the federal government is taking out like a three trillion dollar loan. They're like, wait, a hundred what dollars you're taking from me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay cool story bro like just like just just say that like under capitalism you try to take as much money as from anyone as you can including the government and that's a much better answer that explains shit and isn't <laughs> says like oh, oh i thought <laughs> try that again oh I don't get it. Bet, 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 bet. All right, try that again. Oh, now you're you're garbled. You're garbled. You're garbled. You're garbled. Garbled face. You're but yeah, it's garbled. Got him. But if you're taking money from the government, like I don't care. Like whatever, do do your thing, live your life. But don't tell me that like you taking money from the government is actually this noble action that's gonna like help no. end government. No, no. that's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you want to advocate something like a UBI, where everybody's getting getting their neat bucks, and that will bleed the system. But no, no. no. No, yeah, you but... you going like oh, I just applied for SNAP. Like cool story, bro. How about you get a job? <laughs> <laughs> this is now a boomer cast. Yeah. Oh, what was it? I remember Julie Browski had done a video where she was talking about like libertarian dudes, <laughs> and like because like people were asking like how do I get a libertarian girl? She was, then she was like, well, here's the first thing you do. You don't get welfare and then use the line like, oh, I'm just bleeding, using it to bleed the government. It's like no no chick will be like, oh, that's so hot. Like no no chick will ever say that to you. Like, oh, I need you. I don't know. That sounds like someone who's never been to Philadelphia. <laughs> no, those aren't libertarian girls. Oh, this is true. Yeah, yeah see, it's it's easy because I, I, I just I, – you said libertarian and I just thought physically unattractive. So <laughs> – like the word association in my head is just so no 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 no. libertarian females are fine no they're much more attractive than their male counterparts but that's that's kind of the point (laughs) yeah because there's a large imbalance yeah it's kind of it's kind of like being a cosplayer and you know who they get with big (laughs) dumb apolitical dudes you know why because those are people who actually do shit in their lives yeah i mean can you can you imagine could you imagine dating someone, even if you agree with them, who just talks about nothing but politics all day? Oh, God, no. No, never. No. no. That's that's why I have no problem dating chicks who are like Democrats or Republicans, because the politics ever, never comes up unless they're always like, oh, are you podcast? What's this about? Oh, you're a libertarian? Okay, cool. Whatever. Um, so what do you think of you know the fucking the, the hockey game last night? <laughs> cool. Are you a Trump supporter? <laughs> No, it's 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 a, little, it's a little bit more like oh, do you like pineapple on pizza? This is much more of an uh, <laughs> important question I need to ask you. Yeah, versus... no, liking pineapple. <laughs> libertarianism is the paw. Well, is the paw? Bum. Yeah. Is the pineapple on li- libertarianism? Is the pineapple on, on pizza of politics? Just saying. No, it's anchovies. It's no, it's good, but it's an acquired taste. <laughs> Ooh, that's rough. It's, it's an acquired taste. By the way, anchovies is the best topping. The best topping combo, period, fight me, is anchovies and salami. If you can, if you can <laughs> get you a pizzeria who can do both, I'm just saying. Salami on pizza is this a th- I, I you know what I ate for for lunch today right before this podcast, James? Mm-hmm. I have my hold on. You're, you're, this is. I have a feeling this is going to be a gay joke. Nope. <laughs> a gay man talking be... about salami and lunch. Nope. This mm. is going to be a factual okay. retelling of what I ate. I ate a uh, pretzel crust pepperoni pizza from Little Caesars, <laughs> and I got a two liter of Mountain Dew uh, because we are alt right Twitch streamers, 
and I paid six dollars for all of it. So you know, you might like Andrew Yang, but capitalism delivered six dollars <laughs> for a pizza and a two liter on the, on the Little Caesars app. Let me let so me say this. If you, like I, I find if you go broke and living near a Little Caesars. I find Little Caesars like physically offensive. Like when I see people eat it, like I get grossed out. But there's a couple things that they make that are like. I don't know. I wouldn't even call them seasonal items. They're just like promotional items. Yeah, you have the to get the, pizza. You have to not get the normal pizza. The pretzel yeah. pizza and the deep dish is pretty good, but it's nine dollars, which is like ten grand in Little Caesars money. Yeah, and uh, the what, what, no, there's no. like two or three other things. Okay, so the the things that I will get there is when they bring their uh, their their deep dish that has bacon around the sides of the crust. I'll get That's that, a- the 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 um, the pretzel pizza and the uh, the smokehouse barbecue pizza that they had. Oh, those were amazing. Everything else I've gotten from there. Oh been yeah, disappointment city. Oh, it's the crust is fucking it. awful. It's a fucking hate crime. Sorry, what? They don't. Just <laughs> did. But oh, dollars. You're breaking up. Try that again. I don't know, man. Like every, every, it works all, like every other time I try to use this thing, it works just fine. Just I'm on a really old computer. That's another thing to consider. Yeah. But it's a, but yeah. it's been a whole lot better than it has been, especially with a, a few seasons, a few episodes ago. It was pretty bad for a while. But anyways, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I thought you meant a few episodes of Little Caesars. I was like, oh shit, they have a show. I'll listen to Little Caesars <laughs> podcast. I don't care. What's it called? Caesar Caesar? You know, McDonald's did have a podcast for like three episodes or something. But it was all about Really? Rick, but it was all about the the Rick and Morty incident. Oh happened. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Wait, McDonald's had a McDonald's had a three episode podcast about Sauce Gate and then they've pod faded? Damn. Yes. That's that's a tough scene. <laughs> I'd rather and have they I'd never rather mentioned like, the show by name. I want to hear like heartfelt person to person interviews with the Burger King. <laughs> I want him to be like a Lannis Morissette and bring on like self help authors and, you know, have him bring on Dr. Phil and uh, just just discuss those menu items. Is that when Wendy's comes in and like is like, catch me outside? How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever see the one to catch a predator where they got, they met up with the guy for the second time at McDonald's and Chris Hansen kept on trying not to say the he kept on saying this fast food restaurant but the dude kept moving and they like, kept on showing the various like architecture and logos and you could cl- and, like the garbage cans as you could clearly tell that it was a McDonald's but it was the guy's second time getting caught on to catch a predator and they caught him outside of McDonald's and he's like so that's why you're here. Outside this this fast food restaurant, this make fast food restaurant, because <laughs> <laughs> it had like a McPlay place too, so it was like extra creepy that like a pedo was there to meet a little oh, child. Did and... they have? Did they have plenty of uh, McNukes? I've been looking to get some of those. That's what that's what's waiting at our libertarian paradise is right. going through the drive thru and getting a nuclear warhead. <laughs> the McNuke. I need a McNuke. I need some McHeroin as well. <laughs> McDope. I'm down with McDope. So That's McDope. the thing, though, is like the, the I don't know if you uh, saw the documentary on Netflix, but the heroin they sell at McDonald's, it's all frozen beforehand and it comes from the worst factory heroin farms. <laughs> like, you. You, you really want to go to like a local organic heroin producer. You ju- just get a much cleaner black tar. I think I saw a that's what we're doing up the Lulberts. The, oh, no, we're making radio right now. That's uh, as if the state never existed. Okay. That's what we're doing. <laughs> I, I saw a documentary a while ago where like they had this guy who just did nothing but make heroin for like 30 days. And uh, Wait, he did heroin for 30 days. He, this is boy, Morgan Spurlock's really. Yeah, he didn't make heroin for 30 days. <laughs> and uh, he, he, he didn't overdose, but you know, he got really sick and, and his penis didn't work or something like that. Um, there's a lot of discrepancies about like how much he was actually taking uh, versus what he was saying on the TV. Oh, there's some uh, kind of questionable. 
Seem, it seems as though it's still a little bit safer than the other stuff, but um, he's not willing to admit that. It seems like he. Oh, uh, they think they think he was getting better heroin than everybody else. Oh no, I can't have this. Uh, well, I mean that 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 their that their heroin that their heroin quality was consistent, so he didn't ever overdose. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, but he did overdose. You said. No, no, no. He didn't overdose, but his penis stopped working. Forever. Just while he was taking the Mick heroin. But once he did regular heroin again, he was fine. He was counting buttons like a champ. Oh, okay. This is like, this is like super size me, but with dope. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the moral of the story is do sketchy heroin instead of Mick heroin. Okay. Because McDonald's. Yeah, that's fine. Because gold arch bad. Gold arch bad. Whoo. I had McDonald's last night, and I gotta say, it was it was it was pretty good. I'm boycotting McDonald's. Oh no! Why is it over uh, SJW things? No. Oh please. Yes, please. actually, yes. <laughs> I, I'm, a, I'm a McDonald's SJW. They, they, had, they had a single gender restroom, and that was it for Jim. <laughs> no, I I, uh, I I went there, and they told me, "Oh, we're not serving McRibs this year in all of Nevada." And I said what? And I said I'm not coming ever coming back until I'm, I'm not coming back until you bring back the McRib. So wait, the, but the McRib's fucking disgusting. But the Mc no, fuck you. McRib is the best thing that's on the menu. Fight, fight me. It, but it's not on the menu, as is evidenced by your own story, <laughs> checkmate. But it should have been on the menu. It was on the menu everywhere else. Just not well, Mick, Nevada. I, I, again, as mentioned earlier, nuclear warheads, and but I guess it would be like in. No, nope. sorry, in I, the, it, it would be like in alongside night. You'd have to get the 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 what do you call it the the one part of the nuclear warhead at a different place. No, nope. nope. As I, as, a, as a means of controlling nope. it. I went to the El Pollo the Loco. centrifuge. I guess nope. I went to the local El Pollo Loco, and I got me a hydrogen bomb. So, uh, and it came with salsa. So I'm going to stick with that. Nope. Poyos or Mata. That's. <laughs> or I can get me a, a Sarbamba at a, at Burger King. But no McNukes. I'm, I'm over McNukes. And I'll, I'll try back next. I'll try back this, 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 this fall when they bring back the McRib everywhere else but Nevada. And if there's no McRib, I'm going to boycott them again for a year. And I'm serious. I'm, I'm, put, I'm putting. I'm, 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 I'm putting, my, I'm putting my foot on the ground. I think. When do they roll out? Whoa! Because I I never see it. They they roll them out in uh, like October, September, October, somewhere in there ish. All I hit them. What 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 what? All I guess. <laughs> One more time. Oh jeez. It's, so it's like autumnal. It's uh, it's it's for it's like pumpkin spice and a McRib. Yeah, it's got it's kind of like the McShamrock, whatever it's called, uh, the Shamrock Shake. God, I can't, the Shamrock. I can't, that's God damn it. That's they have now. the Shamrock Shake right now, don't they? They do. You can get that right now, and you can also get Thin Mints from your local Girl Scout troop and crush them and put them in the Shamrock Shake. That was the first McDonald's hack I ever learned. I was no. maybe like ten years old. No, nope, not doing it. Not doing it. Don't tell me. Resist. Hashtag resist. You could also you could all you could also take dark chocolate chips, put nope. them in a food processor, crush them, and then nope. pour that in. Nope. Yep. He will not divide us. McRib, <laughs> the McRib will not divide us. <laughs> also, they want like eight bucks for the McRib. Yeah, but you can get an, another one for a dollar more. What? Oh, is this with the app or something? No, no, no. It, like every time they bring back the McRib, it's like if you get a McRib value meal, you can get a. Then you get a, you can get for an extra buck. You, you can, can get, get another a, McRib. Yeah, you can get two McRibs. What is McDonald's? A fucking infomercial? <laughs> like you just pay shipping on the second McRib? Right. Well, I don't. I don't know if I agree with a lot of these practices. They raised a lot of their prices lately. Yep. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I might. I might have to get off the Jeffrey Tucker train in terms of McDonald's. I think but. Jeffrey Tucker's off of it. I mean, I oh. he, I think he came back from some country and he was complaining that, like all, uh, like I'm 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 just so upset that that I come back to America and I, the food is all kind of loaded with all kinds of chemicals. I'm like, 
dude, don't you understand that everything is made out of chemicals? Like, everything is chemicals. The air you're breathing, that's chemicals. Your whole body is just nothing but a big, giant ball of chemicals. Yeah, and there's also this constant thread through a lot of Jeffrey Tucker that I find a little bit annoying, where if he is personally offended by something, then it becomes a huge problem. Yeah. Like, he doesn't like the smell of weed, therefore, like, <laughs> marijuana is terrible. <laughs> you know, like, he, you know, he, he's at a college campus when people deface it and write, like, whatever uh Pro Trump graffiti, and he thinks it's terrible <laughs> because like people around him were sad, whatever. Uh, but yeah, I, I think yeah. I think the the, the, the thing that makes me just laugh awful. the most is that his like he always praises mediocrity, like oh, you, don't don't bash on Budweiser. Bud Light is a wonderful beer. It's like no, it's not. Don't bash on M and M's. M and M's Uber. M and M's are the best candy. It's like no, it's not. No, it's not. It's really, really not. <laughs> Uber, Uber. It was wonderful. It's like no, it's 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 pretty steady, steady state face. It pretty it is. It's just a little less steady than than taxis. I'll give them that. I'd Ooh. at this point, I'd rather take a taxi. Every, everyone just talks terrible on gruel. But gruel's such a wonderful dish that's just so underrated. It's versatile. <laughs> It's, it's versatile. Like you can, like you can take some corn gruel and add a little bit of mayo and some and some Parmesan cheese and a little bit of hot sauce. And you have like, it's basically like, a, oh, what the fuck is that shit called? What 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 what? It, what it, it fed ten thousand British orphans. Yeah, ten thousand British orphans. And, it's, and we can all blame Charles Dickens and his kind of his kind of very boring kind of philosophy and ethics. It just it doesn't even hold water these days. And I just find it kind of boring. And it's and he's responsible for that, and he's also responsible for the damnation of gruel, which is a wonderful dish. <laughs> 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 By the end of it, you're like, fuck Charles Dickens. I'm going to go eat some gruel. And then you eat it and you're like, oh, yeah, this is just gruel. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, gross, oh, it's gruel's pretty bad. Yeah, I forgot. Big, Big Macs aren't really that good, are they? <laughs> Why did I come here? Fuck you, Jeff. At least they're putting bacon on them now. God are, bless are they? Them. Are they? Oh. Yeah. Oh, but but again, you're there. boycotting like yeah. a little, uh, you know, McRib Justice Warrior. So <laughs> I don't, you know. Well, uh, this is falling on deaf ears, except for, I guess, the listeners. I, I do have an El Pollo Loco right next to me, so I'll be okay. I'll be just fine. Do they just sell chicken at El Pollo Loco? Uh, pretty much, yeah. It's grilled chicken. Okay. Yeah, char-grilled chicken. It's it's like amazing. a Raisin Cane's. You ever been to one of those? Oh, no, we have a Raisin Cane's. They're great. I love Raisin Cane's. It's like, what do you want? It's like, well, you only got one thing. It's not really what yeah, I want. It's how much I want. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like in and out the same thing it's like what can i get you it's like we only got like three things so i just want all of those three things just this much of it or the double animal style fries well they have a secret menu to be fair to in and out at least they have a secret menu no like i live in delaware we, we... delaware middle hi you're in Delaware. We're in Delaware. Yeah. I'm less than a... Oh, you're breaking up. Of course, a, a, a mile... A mile. <laughs> Give me one second. Let's try this. Try this real quick. Maybe this will help. All right. Try that one more time. There we go. Yeah, but a mile is a third of the state, so... Yep. Yeah. People, people complain in Delaware when they have to drive to something that's 15 minutes away. Like, they really prefer it to be in the 5 to 10 range. Let's move the server over closer to you. Maybe that'll help. Yeah, like, that's the way it is. And, in, in, like, when I lived in Southern California, people would be okay with sitting in, in three hours of traffic to go, you know, what would normally be a 30-minute drive. No problem. Uh, but here yeah. in Vegas, like, if I, like, I'll be like, oh, let's go, let's go, let's go downtown. They're like, Ugh. You want to go all the way down there? Ugh. It's like, dude, that's like 10 minutes away. N not even 10 minutes away. And it's only 10 minutes because it's like there's going to be a little bit of mild traffic at the spaghetti bowl. Like, why are we complaining? Like, 
you want to take a surface street around there like maybe it'll get there and like say shave a minute off like really we're gonna complain about that I think I, I think I live about like 10 blocks away from downtown and people will complain about going that far it's 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 ridiculous <laughs> About ten blocks is a little bit much. I think it's a little bit like fifty. That's stumbling distance. Yeah. Uh, it, it would be a, it would be a bit of a mob. We have big blocks here, so yeah. Blocks. But, but anyway, yeah. I'm amazed they call them blocks. I'm amazed they're not you know dunes or some other <laughs> desert-like term. <laughs> I live five tumbleweeds away. <laughs> No, it, it'll be well. They 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 took down the dune. The dunes is no longer around anymore. They blew that up. They also blew up the frontier. So I don't know. Maybe it's a maybe it's a it's a win, a mirage and a circus circus away. Somewhere. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Whereas like Henderson is a good you know, it's, it's about a good thirty uh, thirty Monte Carlos away. But you know, it's it's worth the drive. It's worth the drive. Nice have they gotten to the bottom of that shooting yet? Have they have have our nation's YouTube? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. They figured out what gotten, happened. You figured it out? No, they or, did. Wait, they did. You ready? They yeah. don't know why he did it. Oh, okay. Yeah, it doesn't seem like he had a real motivation other than he wanted to do it. <laughs> he did, oh, he hated the casinos though, right? No. He was still pretty wealthy. He had a lot of money. Oh, okay. Well, he was up. I guess that's that. Breaking. Yep. Uh, he just breaking wanted it. to do that's, it. That's. I feel that's good for the conspiracy markets, though, because yeah. if it's if it if it's open ended like that, there's no end to the amount of like shit quality YouTube videos that can be made. Speaking of three, shit three quality. hour long. Po- <laughs> three hour long podcasts. Yeah. Speaking of shit quality videos and three hour long podcasts, uh, our old channel has been getting hit with like all these weird like th- like strikes on not they're not really strikes. I don't know. Have you ever seen like a video on YouTube and before you go to it, it goes like warning: this video has like offensive yes. content and it's restricted usually, videos. Yeah, yeah, it's usually where like you'd see those on like Cantwell's channel or something like that. Holocaust denial. Yeah, yeah. Owen Benj- Owen Benjamin gets them all the time. Yeah, yeah. So the the Lorberts channel, which I don't we, we don't upload things to, and the the versions of them that are on my 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 main account, they're still fine. They haven't been touched, but the ones on the the Lorberts channel proper have been getting a hit. Uh, one of them, what was hit was the. One of the, I think it's like the, it's episode two that I did with Matt, where we were first talking about the alt right, and we were talking about like, oh yeah, we were following most of these people back in the day before you guys even heard about the term alt right, and before that was even a term, and like yeah, these people are terrible, and not brown shirts are not any better than communists or than the red shirts, they're they're awful. And that's what the show was about, and they they were like, oh, we don't we don't allow for hate speech. It's like, what are you talking about? We were bashing hate, these hate groups or whatever. Well, no, you said something bad about communists. Oh, I see. You see how it goes. Yeah. There you go. But I don't know, but they've been going after communists too. Well, right. It's not as if it's a like evenly applied policy. It's it's whatever on whatever. Yeah, they 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 do hate communists. You, that's a myth that YouTube doesn't like communists. No, that they or that they like communists. No, they hate communists. Like, what is this? You ever heard of Dick Coughlin? Like, he's he's on his like eighth channel right now. It's ridiculous. He keeps getting banned all the time. Um, it's just that communists don't really like to report. Like, oh, my channel got hit with demonetization because they don't really care about money because they're communists. Yeah, um, it's, lo- it, it, it's <laughs> not in character to be caring about your money. Yeah, um, but. The the thing that really pissed me off is monetized that, yesterday. Yeah, Jeremy and I had did a podcast about the the October first shooting, like two days after it happened, and there were already conspiracy theories about it, and they were all retarded. And we were going like, these conspiracy theories are stupid. Let's go over some of the conspiracy theories that we've heard so far and explain why they're stupid and why they're wrong. And they were all labeled for like, oh, this is the conspiracy theory video. And I was like, "What the f- what?" Restricted, right? Yeah, it got restricted. 
<laughs> I, I like, demonetized. I was like, how the fuck is this promoting a conspiracy theory or denying that the, that the event happened when we're saying that it did happen? And like, I even tweeted it at, at Team because YouTube, and it's still fucking blocked. Discussing the con even oh. out there, I guess it that didn't help. Okay, one more time. <laughs> I swear I, I guess fixed this. It worked fine with Jeremy. Except Jeremy kept fucking hanging up the call. Other than that, it was fine. Oh, Jeremy kept hanging up? That's that's gangsta. Yeah. Oh, would he get pissed? Be like, yo, fuck this. Click. <laughs> They'd come right back and be like, all right, I forgive you. Yeah, he was he was uh, definitely pulling a night turner on me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. I mean let me move it over to my coast. Maybe it is me. Who knows what's going on? All right, try, I, try I highly now. doubt it. I think it's a combination of the server and my computer. Or, oh, you know what? I think I'm actually connected to the... Yes, I'm actually connected to the wrong Wi-Fi. Let me fix that real quick. The server connected to the Wi-Fi. There we go. That should actually be a whole lot better once I hang up. And <laughs> come right back in. There we go. It should be fine. There he comes. Okay. All right. What did yeah, you say? You sound a lot better. No, you sound much better. Wow. <laughs> okay. Night and day. Okay. What were you saying? Uh, I identify as an attack helicopter. But let's just what do the whole episode out? all over again. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> From the top. From the top. Andrew Yang. Let's go. <laughs> Yang gang. <laughs> Synth wave. Next. Get that need bucks. Get your bags, fam. Leap bucks. Yep. So what were you saying about Jeremy? About, uh, uh, no, uh, <laughs> yesterday I watched Owen Benjamin get demonetized from YouTube, then make a video talking about how, how gay it was that he was demonetized from YouTube and also that money is gay. So he doesn't care. So to, to <laughs> recap, money's gay. It's also gay to stop Owen from getting money. So yes. pretty difficult to operate as a non sodomite in today's society. Well, the ugly thing about monetization is like it's not just losing money that's the issue. If you have a if you have a channel that's demonetized, YouTube doesn't promote your video. Why should they? They can't run ads on your video. Right. So they're not gonna share it. That's what's happened to my YouTube channel. They demonetized my whole entire fucking channel, which understandably, because I, I knew it at the time and I broke the rules anyway, I had a lot of videos that were just re-uploads of copyrighted content, which I was like, okay, fine. I just won't enable monetization on it. That's fine. But then they came in and they were just like, oh, no, no, no. The new rule is you just can't have it, period. And it's like, all right. Yeah. All right, so I went and th deleted a whole bunch of channels. This was like three months ago, mind you. I deleted a whole bunch of my videos that that were like these re-uploads, including a BBC documentary about the Church of Scientology, which was linked on like multiple different like Wikipedia pages about Scientology. I took that down, and uh, three months later, I put in my application saying like, "Hey, review my channel," and they said, "We'll get back to you in a month," and it's month three. Fuck YouTube. <laughs> YouTube is YouTube is the big gay. Oh yeah, that's it's cl classic sodomy. Yep, classic sodomy. Big gay. They drink yep. Mount Gay rum and everything. They treated you like you were an ancient Greek child, coated you in olive oil, and licked it off. <laughs> that's what they did. They said thanks for the content, young Jimmy. Yeah, they have they had scratchy cat tongues. It was it was kind of disturbing. I was not happy about it. That is rough. Nothing yeah. like having elderly Greek men lick rough. olive oil off of you. Rough. Rough, rough, rough. Rough. <laughs> all right, was there you anything a furry? else that we would have... What? No, hell no, I'm not a furry. All right, all right, that's good. No. <laughs> uh, look. You know, like a lot, lot of, lot of libertarians are on about like, oh, we're gonna throw communists out of helicopters. Yang is a little bit different. He's gonna throw normies out of Tardises, and I, I think he should also consider throwing furries out of Tardises too. 
uh, I would I would definitely reconsider my 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 voting. Wait, he's gonna he's gonna physically remove the furries? Is this no the normies? He's gonna be physically remove the normies. There's also a quote going around of him saying that. Well, there's, you realize it's a majority normie country, right? Like where are you <laughs> yeah. gonna put them? Right. Well, you know, I think it was a almost a majority communist country in Germany when Hitler took over. So, you know, one was at a time. Well, it was the brown shirts and the red shirts. The brown shirts only got like 13% of the vote, but they won because there was like 18 different brown shirts and red shirt parties. Huh. But well, anyway. I, as somebody who only consumes alt-right media, I don't trust any history of World War II. So <laughs> I'm afraid I'm just going to have to wonder. And uh, History is know. written by the winners, Goyim. Am I right? <laughs> Yeah, it's so uh, it's so odd. Like what what shifting standards for what you'll believe? Yeah, like d depending on the topic, and and whether you like the person talking to oh. you or not. That seems that that seems to be a big determinant for whether alt right uh, for how much evidence an alt right person demands is. You know, I, I can't believe that we sit whether here. it's a source they like. I can't believe that we sat here and talked about memes and the alt right, but we didn't talk about the fucking elephant in the room. Or the fucking uh, the the. New Zealand shooter that shot up at mosque. Did you see this thing happen with the okay sign? Oh, it's 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 way more than the okay sign. It's way more than the okay sign. Oh no. Oh, Wait, no. did he donate to Cantwell? Well, oh, what's his no. deal? Okay, so he live streamed the shooting, right? I saw the video. Oh, you saw the whole video, so you saw him say things like subscribe to PewDiePie and him listening to remove kebab on his radio. <laughs> I, I didn't, I didn't know that it was remove kebab. I just thought it was like, yeah. Didn't you notice that like during the right, right, right between the, the chorus, it was going like, yeah, it's remove kebab. He okay. Was, I'm unf unfamiliar with what that is, but okay. Uh, I'm sure you've seen it. It's like this old eighties video of like, like a guy playing the accordion, this, someone playing the trumpet and it would like flash over to someone playing the keyboard it's like a meme okay but, but anyways the song is about like removing the the muslims or committing some sort of genocide in bosnia <laughs> um but anyways um there was that he also wrote this manifesto which was basically a thousand word shit post and in it, he had like he had things like like uh, they asked him like you know what was his military history, and he said that he was a Navy SEAL, and he's been trained in guerrilla combat, and he has over three hundred like he was basically doing the Navy SEALs copy pasta, and so it was kind of funny okay. like listening yeah. to all these news journalists claiming that like oh he claims to be like a Navy a former Navy SEAL, and he had th over three hundred confirmed kills, and I'm just in there like laughing like that's literally a meme, dude. <laughs> Ah, uh, uh, oh, so, confirm not my connection. They gave just some. What? Hold on, hold on. Why don't you try? Sealed. Why don't you try? And people that? Are like it's it, it's stolen valor or whatever. That would be great. But, but try, try that all over again because you missed everything. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like if if fifty people were dead, that would be a great troll of the media. Mm -hmm. Like if it were some, if he had some story about being a Navy SEAL that didn't involve him going and shooting up multiple mosques. Yeah, we're in that. But uh, unfortunately, uh, that was one of the most horrifying videos I've ever seen in my life. It looked like a fucking video game. Yeah. Like, yeah. There was a meme that I wanted to do, and it was a two, one of those kind of like too soon kind of jokes. But you know me, if it, if if it's there can be no too soon, right? Where I don't know if you remember the uh, the hardcore Henry movie. Do you remember this movie? Nope. It was like a first person movie where the guy's like doing all kinds of crazy stuff and shooting people and whatever. But it, originally, that how that came to be was there was a music video for I'm a Badass Motherfucker or something like that. I think that's the name of the song. And uh, it's all in first person and like it's a guy like shooting a bunch of people and a bunch of people are after him and chasing him and he's like shooting everybody. And I was actually t thinking about taking that music and putting it on top of the footage of that thing and I was like, you know, if I upload that to anything, I'll get banned. So I'm just not yeah. going to. <laughs> but it, in my head, it was a, a really funny meme. 
very very tasteless but for, but funny nonetheless hey did you hear in new zealand it's 10 years in prison if you if you're for possession of the video really yeah what i don't know how i don't know how fake this news is but there's apparently they've declared like the video to be at the highest level like with child pornography of <laughs> whatever whatever internet law they have and it, and if you if you share the video then it's it's even more i think it's like 14 years or something oh shit but yep yeah, decentralized a, storage folks yeah it's it's diff- it, it was a disturbing video it was hard for me to watch it was really rough um Yeah, especially the double tapping. That's what really got me. Like, how like fuck. Yeah, that it was. It was pretty gruesome. It was like the way he goes back and just like fires more bullets into like the piles of bodies. Yeah, it was right. just it was like nothing. And then everybody's going through his manifesto and going like, "Yep, he definitely was a Christian conservative." And in there, he was like, "No, I'm I'm an eco fascist accelerationist, and I want you to go around and tell everybody that I'm pro guns." And I, I want you to go and use this as an excuse to ban guns. And I want you to go around and say every, like that I'm a conservative because fuck conservatives. <laughs> it's like Argh. they're doing exactly what he thought he was gonna, what they were gonna do. And the reason why he was gonna do it, because the reason why he did it, because he knew that that's what they were gonna do. And he did it, and they were right. Yeah, uh, the co, my coworker that watches a lot of Alex Jones, definitely. Uh, walked directly up to me and told me that it was all fake. Oh, that's it, 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 that's happening now, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so, like, it doesn't matter how well you document like an event now. It's nope. just nope. Confirmed it's all... false flag. However, if there is a gas explosion in your neighborhood, that's martial law. Yeah. <laughs> that's evidence of martial law. <laughs> that was the that was one of the greatest things I ever saw on YouTube. Was this is right when they first it like introduced live streaming where you could like go live whatever. And there was this guy in Philadelphia who had a chemtrail channel and it was always him like shooting his like thing at the sky and being like, "Oh my god, we're being poisoned." And uh he was live one day ranting into his camera about like the Illuminati or whatever and you just hear this big boom behind him and he screams it's martial law (laughs) and then he runs out and one of his neighbors like with a really thick Philly accent is like it was a gas explosion (laughs) (laughs) oh Philly when is Philly going to be the next Florida what do you mean it's already full of terrible people but why, don't, why don't we have the the philly philadelphia man meme be, be, because they're they're all smart enough to not call to not call the media on each other and everybody when someone from philly does something er, people in the area have this sort of reduced capacity logic that comes in where they're like oh well it was philly like of course they like sold their baby <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> or whatever because that's just what happens out there. And same thing with Baltimore. Like, I think you could make an argument that Baltimore mm. man could be a meme just as just as easily as Florida man. But Florida man gets, gets some great shit, though. True. Yeah. All right. So you want to you want to plug your th- your stuff? You have any upcoming tour dates? Uh, no. Uh, Monumental waste of time on LaughCast dot com. L a f f c a s t and. I'm currently at work on an erotic novel about the 2020 Democratic primary called Ooh. the Iowa caucus. Uh, Is Yang so, going to be in it? Of course. You can't, you, come on. Yang's going to have on. those sacks, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going <laughs> to have those sacks. Kamala Harris has a big part in it. It's going to be it's going to be great. I'm going to be accused of every form of bigotry and it's going to be uh, cheap on the on on Kindle. So, <laughs> yep. I've been working on that. All right. So, yeah. Go check us out on Podbean. Go check us out on Podbean. Podbean. <laughs> Give me money. Hashtag please donate. I'm running for president. Uh, Geoga. 
We're going to be saving all of these people from human trafficking. Please donate. Uh, wait, what, what are you talking about, human trafficking? I never said anything about human trafficking. What are you talking about? What? You just gave me money to do my show. Uh, <laughs> oh, is, 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 are you trying to say something? I... <laughs> so, I... Uh, when hub i'm on the you're on the what you're cutting out you want to facetime uh yeah well, periscope I... drinking games of people's low quality okay i think i know what you said i, th I think we got like some uh, of it i think you're saying that if you follow you on suit on your twitter which is at sumo periscope. sexual that you can go and watch all of your things on periscope where you do drunken dancing Yes, and and drinking games of bad podcasts. Yes, awesome. Yeah, and there's plenty of bad podcasts it. to do drinking games. <laughs> oh, there's so many. You can start with the Lowberts, and you can learn more at thelowberts.com. Was... <laughs> Thanks, Steve, for coming on. We'll talk. The to you later. Hmm? This is shit. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Worms. Worms. We're taking that back. <laughs> <laughs>